okay, now I'm a few days late. I had a busy day today. I had it and uh, wasn't actually, wasn't because of work. It was because something that, something that came up in the family. I had the trade shifts, you know, life happens. But anyway, uh, time to get caught up on some draft talk and some trade news as well. So, I mean, in trade news, I, I got to lead off with this. Oh my goodness. Well, let me try to remember the details, right? I mean, what, it was Kuzma, KCP. I want to say there was a third player involved in the deal, but I don't remember who. I know there was a pick involved. And the Lakers get Russell Westbrook. And, and let me tell you, this is, this is something... It definitely raises the Lakers ceiling, but I'd also, but I'd also caution, it does drop their floor a little. Now, now why would I say that? Well, depends on what they can get in free agency, you know, what role players take the place of the guys who just departed. Now, getting off of Kuzma and getting Westbrook in return, that, that's an upgrade, no question. I mean, even in like even in a playoff scenario, at least with, with Westbrook, you gotta respect him at least a little. Like even if you're gonna sag way off of him, you still gotta respect the his threat a little. Especially next to Braun and AD. Kuzma, no. <laughs> no. You, like, you can just disrespect that man in the playoff setting all you want. Uh, I mean, KCP's another guy who you'd sag off of in a playoff setting, but he provides a little more value. He, you know, he's a better defender, but again, just, you'll have to see what you can get. Who knows? Apparently Avery Bradley's gonna be a free agent again. Maybe the Lakers can get him back and he can have a healthy season. If it, I mean, if Avery Bradley can return to what he was before he got hurt a couple years ago, that would be, I mean, because what I'm imagining he'll get signed for is not a lot. And if that happens and, you know, he retur returns to most of his form from two years ago, that will be an absolute bargain for this team. Uh, but, yeah. Any, I mean, th there are no other, like, big trades I can think of. Oh, yeah. No, the, the pick was the third player, and it was it was Isaiah Todd, who we'll see. I mean, I, I don't remember much about him, but I mean, good luck to him in the NBA. Which, speaking of good luck to rookies in the NBA, the draft happened. So, obviously, you know. The top three went how I expected. And the first thing I got wrong was at number four, the Raptors decided to select Scotty Barnes. I mean, I guess they kind of see him as a point guard type and that they didn't, you know, uh, they wanted some more size around Fred Van Vliet and with the guys they had. I just, Jalen Suggs to replace, uh, what's his name, Kyle Lowry just made so much sense to me. But, you know, the Magic get Jalen Suggs. I mean, I know they have a lot of young guards, but like even with RJ Hampton and as talented and as much upside as he has, I'll take Jalen Suggs over him all day, every day. Which, speaking of, uh, I mean, I won't name any losers in the draft, but my three winners, one of them, I have to give it to Orlando. They finally, like, they finally took guys that they're like, okay, you know, they got they got a little bit of they got a little bit of a high floor type of profile, but like especially with Suggs, you know, they could be you know more than what they're coming into the league as. Wagner, maybe, maybe not, but still. I mean, they needed someone like Wagner on the team anyway. Uh, let's see, who else? Oh, yeah. So, for context on draft night, you know, I had a shift. 
I was following along on Twitter. And at 11, I was expecting to see Charlotte taking Kai Jones. But no, instead, they take Boat Knight, who somehow slid to 11. I'm like, oh, good value. They probably won't get Kai Jones, but hey. Then they trade for the 19th pick and get Kai Jones. And then they trade into the second round and get JT Thor. Like, and again, that is, yeah. We'll, we'll see how these guys pan out, but right now it seems like they got three guys who, like, two of them they trade for, and all three of the guys they got were guys who were expected to go higher than they did. I mean, and that's with, you know, you got Boak Knight who, I mean, yes, Charlotte has a ton of guards, but, you know, there, there's free agency coming up for some of them. And Boak Knight is a three-level scorer that some, a lot of people thought going into the draft might go six. And most people had at least in the top 10. So getting him at 11 seems like an absolute bargain. Then Kai Jones, he might take two or three years to develop along, but again, at the 19th pick, that's fine. But what he is, is he's potentially a long-term solution at a position of need. Because, you know, they need the defensive anchor kind of five, you know. I mean, P.J. Washington as a small ball five is fine, you know, but you need something to complement that. And Kai Jones can be that. And then J.T. Thor, I mean, now, they're already loaded at the kind of four position already, but Thor provides, like, defense. Like, his upside as a defender is crazy. Like, seriously, the... Like, the size, the athleticism, I mean, and that was his calling card at Auburn. So, yeah, that was good. That was good for the Hornets. And then, I mean, who else? Will, I mean, okay, I may be a little biased here. I think the Pelicans are another winner in this draft because, you know, obviously they got off, first of all, to get in the draft positions they got. They got off of Valanchun. No, they they took on they took Valanciunas to to get off of the Bledsoe and Adams contract. They slid back seven spots, and then took someone at seventeen that they might have taken at ten anyway. And Murphy from Virginia. Then at thirty five, they took a guy who like for months I was hoping would be there at thirty five, and that they would take at thirty five in Herb Jones. There may be questions about the consistency with his shot, but for one, if I mean, if you've been following the Pelicans for an extended period of time, you know who Fred Vincent is. You know the wonders that man has worked with some people's jump shots, namely Lonzo Ball. So I definitely think that he that like he can help uh, Herb Jones become a a good shooter, at least off the catch. And then the defense he's going to provide. The defense is something this team needs. I mean, Murphy's a really good defender too, but Herb Jones, that is absolutely his calling card. And now that I will say that the defense did improve toward the end of the year, but, you know, now they have a coaching change and you can never have too many good defenders. But, uh, yeah, that, I mean, again, I'm not going to name any losers because I, th I mean, you can, I mean, it's probably too early to try to name any winners too, but I mean, it's especially too early to try to name losers. I mean, and then now, I, I know there, now I, I also get uh, that our fan base, some of the frustration around, you know, trading out the other picks, but I mean, we got a lot of future picks too. You know, the Pelicans have a lot of future draft capital. Now you can debate on how good it is, you know, considering it's a lot from the Lakers and Bucks, but I mean, still, there, there's going to be plenty more chances to come. Um, so, let's see, I'm 
trying to remember how the last three picks. I mean, well, first off, also, the Grizzlies were, are probably another winner in the draft. Uh, I mean, okay, the, yeah, the Rockets, too, they they made some good picks. Um, trying, trying to remember who each all got. Memphis, oh. Oh yeah, Memphis took Zaire Williams at 10. You know, that that's a swing for the fences kind of pick. Again, I don't remember the Grizzlies whole draft off the top of my head. I know that at number 40, they got Jared Butler, who I was surprised to see there. I mean, and of course, all of draft Twitter was all like, you know, every time anyone was selected before Jared Butler or Sharif Cooper, they were going crazy, and it's like, there's good prospects other than Jared Butler and Sharif Cooper. Which also, the Hawks would be another winner in this draft. I mean, they, they had two picks, and they picked two guys who were sliding, but, you know, were still probably better than where they were picked at. Uh, but yeah, going back to the Rockets draft, I mean, you know, they at two, you know, they got Jalen Green, and then with the next two picks, they seem to compensate for the fact that they didn't take Mobley in the top three by by taking a Sanguine, the you know the one of the foreign centers who seems to have more of an all around game, and then Usman Garuba or however you say it, who's kind of the defensive anchor type, you know, and. Like if, and you know, I said if one of them pans out, you know they can, they can be a good five next to a uh, Christian Wood. You know, in lines where they want to go with Christian Wood at the four. You know, that you know that's if one of them pan out. If both of them pan out, you know they can. And I'm guessing they could each play about like twenty minutes a game, and you know just provide, you know provide good like. Provide a good big man presence off the bench. Let's see, oh yeah, and then they took Josh Christopher, which that you know that's an upside swing. You know, if if Christopher pans out, then he'll be a really good uh, scoring guard off the bench, which a lot of you know pre. How do I say it? A scoring guard off the bench is a good thing to have. You know, a microwave scorer off the bench can win you a few games a year. But yeah, I think uh, that's about it for what, what I could think of. I'm trying to remember if there are any other big trades. Mm. Just give me a few seconds. Yeah, no. Uh, oh yeah, I guess I'll mention one more winner is Goal, you know, Golden State, even though they weren't able to offload 714, you know, they were able to get guys at 714 who could be seen as a good part of a trade package. You know, first at seven, they took Kuminga, who's, you know, you can sell as an upside swing, and then Moody at 14, who another, what I think will be another steal. And with Moses Moody, but what you can get if you throw Kaminga in the deal is throw Moody in there and say, hey, now here's a role player type, you know. You know what you're getting at the least and you may get a little more than this too. So, yeah, Warriors, I would say are winners because even though they didn't trade the picks they had, they got guys who can, who you can make the case would be good trade chips. Well, yeah, now I'll say that's about all, and uh, sorry for all the dead air time, but peace.